we go back to the 1990s, uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Kramer, he did studies looking oh, at... Oh, Kramer's the man. Yeah, he did some of the... Here's what's interesting. He did some of the key studies looking at different weight training intensities and loads and the acute response vis-a-vis testosterone and growth hormone. So what he found in general, and I'm going to sort of summarize it, is higher volume weight training, mean, meaning lower weight but higher reps, tended to produce greater increases in testosterone and I believe growth hormone. Yes. And then when you did the heavier weights, lower volume but heavier weights, it didn't produce as much. And I remember reading these studies way back when, and I'm thinking, okay, you know what? That doesn't matter because you can get hyper, and I'm dealing just with hypertrophy. Mm-hmm. You can get hypertrophy with both. So, so what exactly is the claim being made? What a lot of muscle magazines did at the time, because I wrote for a lot of them, is that they said, hey, if you want hypertrophy, you got to do high volume stuff. And I'm thinking, but low volume stuff, high weight stuff also induces similar hypertrophy. So when we're dealing with the hyper skeletal muscle hypertrophy issue, I think the T boosters don't do anything. Um, so people say, well, why don't you steel man the argument that they're good for you? I'm like, okay. When you look at the data on T boosters, it seems that if you get older males who are hypogonadal, that it actually might help them. Not so much with skeletal muscle, but they seem to feel better. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Feeling better is a good thing. Mm-hmm. However, yep. and this is the caveat, if you're an older hypogonadal male, you're going to your physician for TRT. You you're are not, getting TRT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are not taking Fedoja Gress's Tom Ali, and what's the other one? Uh, uh, Huberman. Huberman is going to send you hate mail. Yeah, Huberman's so full of shit with this stuff. I, he, he is. So so I didn't realize. So I'd hate to take this AD. Do you have ADD like us? You seem to be on the spectrum. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so Huberman... I was listening to him. I'm like, I didn't really back, fact check his stuff. Then he started talking about supplements. And when he came out with the test booster one, I was like, this guy's full of shit. And so then I looked at some of the other shit he said, and I delved into some of his cold plunge data. He's quoting the worst fucking data. And he's taking, he's cherry picking data to support his views on a lot of stuff. Now, is he a net positive for science? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we need to be honest, intellectually honest, that some of the shit he says is out of control. Like it's, his, his supplement science is so bad. And he yeah. came out with a supplement line, of course. Yeah. Well, you hit the nail on the head. When he, when he talks about exercise and nutrition and supplements, it's, it's outside of what he really knows. He's an and eye doctor. I mean, if, it's funny. If you Google, do a Google search of his research, it is all physiology of the eye. Um, yeah. So, so there's that issue. And I have noticed that he does much less of that lately. He's not touching nutrition and exercise as much because mm. It tends to be, wow, this is really some weird, it's it's almost, uh, there's a naivete to how he interprets research. It's almost like a student reads an abstract and they're like, holy shit, if I sit in cold water for 4.3 minutes, you know, fat oxidation goes up and I should be able to lose fat. It's like, no, that's actually not what the data says. Now, we, we, can, we can spend yeah. another 10 hours on brown fat and its application oh, yeah. on fat loss in human beings. Isn't yeah. it located like right here and in adults, it's like minuscule? It's, like you're it, active. Yeah, it's it's so small <laughs> it, that it's it's meaningless. It's like going to your doctor and complaining about the pimple on your ass when you have pancreatic cancer. It's like, yeah, doctor, <laughs> got a pimple on my ass. Oh, hey, buddy, you got pancreatic cancer. You know, so people worry about oh these tiny, God. tiny things. Now, the T booster thing, I, I have one last comment to say about yes. it is that it doesn't matter if it's Huberman or someone else selling it. And in fact, I think Jocko now is selling a testosterone. Yeah. I sell a test I sell a Prima V based and I sell a yeah. despartic acid based, but I'm honest in my assessment. Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not I'm it. not selling it as a steroid. I, the way they're selling it is that it's targeted towards young males who obviously that's the nut demographic you want, and that it will create this this anabolic environment. I'm thinking. Young males are not, it's not going to help young males, but uh, are, is yeah. it, Mark, is it sexy to, to, to market it to the 65 year old male who could be hypogonadal? I mean, does anyone give a shit? I mean, well, honestly, our sales are mainly to dudes over 30 uh, and, and it, it does have at least an anecdotal, um, you know, increase in, in, um, libido, um, whether that's from the ancillary ingredients that we put alongside the tea boosting ingredients, whether that's for whatever, um, there's human data. We have numbers. Um, so if I'm going to be in that category, I'm going to be intellectually honest. Am I, am I taking it? I'm on TRT. No, if you're on TRT, it's like throwing newspaper in a forest fire. You're not, you're not doing, you're, you're not doing anything, but I think the, the key to supplement sales is you have data, you have this, you have that. I know you have to sell things, but you have to be intellectually honest. And I know you have to use hyperbole to sell things. I understand that. 
like, and, and, and I've done it, you know, but when it comes to testosterone boosters, I think we need to, again, it puts a stain on the industry when we, we make claims that are not even close to being substantiated by any sense of science. And that's why when I talk about insurgent, which has Prima V, I'm like, just as a footnote, you know, we interpret the data, just like the original data on branched amino acids were on wrestlers. I mean, it's like when we came out with extend back in 2004, we, till we funded that study with the Weeder research group and, and college of Charleston, Dr. Timothy sheet, we really had nothing, but you know, wrestling, like we had a, a, a small study on wrestlers and we interpret it the best we can. And then, but then people, the problem with, with studies is then you fund a study and people are like, well, of course it's going to say that you funded it. Like who else is going to fund a study on yeah. healthy young males? And that's why we use two groups. That's why we use Stepani and we use sheet because they were working independently of each other. We wanted to reduce the chance that there'd be any weirdness, that there'd be any people who'd call us out. It's like, Hey, talk to them. Like they were working independently of each other. You know, yeah. how collaborative studies work obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought it was such a brilliant design because it was almost, I thought it was hater proof. I'm like, whatever the, and whatever the results would have came out, they came out in our favor, obviously with our interpretation of what right. we thought would happen. But no matter what the results would have been, I would have put them out there. Like it, it no, was, yeah. So, so that's my opinion on science and science again, like, but I want more studies on branch chains. I'm not funding anymore. I've already had a, a couple hundred grand for it, but like <laughs> no more branch chain studies for Mark Lobliner. I no, did my it, one it, and I always tell people, I'm like, Oh, disprove it. Then <laughs> I'm like, you can't afford to disprove my study. You know, I think, I think where the supplement industry gets really the short, the, like the short end of the stick besides a lot of other shit, but like it's nature's medicine. Like uh, supplementation actually helps avoid chronic illness, disease, um, helps uh, you know stave off sarcopenia and those sorts of things. And I just wish we could get to a point in society where instead of people like, oh, it's a supplement, like vitamin D is a supplement. Are you telling me vitamin D doesn't work? You know, like, uh, you know, we supplement vitamin D to avoid all sorts of problems. I mean, Mark used it to kill his YouTube channel, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the, like, like the, I just don't understand why, like, and I, I, I do understand why, but since we're keeping this on YouTube and everything like that, this is more of an eating rants type thing. Like why the healthcare system has made it so supplementation is almost seen as like this shit that barely works. And when it does, it's bad for you. It's almost how it's like viewed. Right. But yeah. meanwhile, proper supplementation, especially in a, like a food environment that we're in in America now, where it's very, very, very low nutrition, extremely high calories. Those sorts of things that cause a lot of uh, systemic inflammation, those sorts of issues. I would think that we should be looking for the most cost effective way to get people healthier and especially maintain their immune system, those sorts of things, which would be the stuff based off Ayurvedic medicine that's been around for thousands of fucking years, which is basically sports nutrition is based off Ayurvedic medicine. And I just, I, I wish we could get to the stage where when we see people like, you know, Jose here, Thousands of studies all showing very positive things. And it's still crazy. Like creatine is likely the most studied substance in the fucking world. Almost Probably. like it really is. I mean, it, when it comes to health and nutrition, it's like likely the most studied compound in the world. And as Mark says, everybody should take creatine. Everybody should, because you're not going to get enough of it for it to be beneficial just from meat and fish. That's where it mm -hmm. comes from. So I just like, I, I, where do you think we could, how do you think we could bridge that gap? Like, how do you think we could bridge the gap into making it people realize that this is a lot more about healthcare than about like big muscles sometimes, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> Again, it's sort of the analogy of we're the 300 Spartans yeah. and then there's a million Persians trying to kill us. Um, you're going against a million Persians, you know, figuratively. Um, I, you know, as I was alluding to earlier, I'm not a science purist. So when people, when people say foods first, supplements second, my view of that is it's, they're all consumable. There shouldn't be a hierarchy because nobody doesn't eat food. We all eat food. It's sort of, it's, it's a given. So to me, you know, even though I'd say 99% of people you ask in, in the science world, whether it's nutrition or exercise, it's like, fix your diet, then take a supplement. And my, I take a very pragmatic view. I'm like, do both. But you know what? Diet is much harder to fix than taking a supplement. And in fact, yep. I would argue based on the data that you don't have to fix your diet at all for certain supplements to work. In fact, almost all the studies on creatine did not change the diet. Wow. So you yeah. can have a shitty diet, take creatine, guess what? You'll get stronger, you'll put on some lean mass, and you'll just be better off in the long run. Wow. So 
to me, it's it's all the same thing. Everything that is consumable, I treat as one sort of, you know, big bag of stuff. So, you know, if let's, let's say for breakfast, you know, I usually work out in the morning. So my breakfast, oddly enough, is just a shake, a protein shake. But I consider it a meal. It's still calories, still protein. Then I have a typical Asian lunch and dinner. You know, you can make fun of my Asian food, Mark, if you want to have rice. Meat, no. vegetables. We always get sushi. It's a thing. It's a sushi. <laughs> That's right. And then for dinner, I'll have rice, meat, and vegetables, or we'll go out and get Mexican food or something. But I think I think it's important, and, and I think part of the mission of ISN is to show that there there are some benefits. And you you mentioned vitamin D. It's like okay, well, being out in the sun is great. If you can't be out in the sun and you live in freaking Seattle, Washington, take some vitamin D supplements. These supplements are just as important as eating food. And People are literally going outside, spreading their legs and sun tanning their balls. People are following these crazy diets, eating before 8 a.m., after 8 p.m. They don't know what they're doing. They're looking at all these strange things, strange foods, trying to increase their testosterone, training a.m., p.m., full body, half body. They're looking for these secrets, these solutions, a shortcut to a great body to build muscle, to burn fat, to be the best them ever. This is crazy because it's all about protein, guys. People doing all of this stuff aren't even getting the thing that we know works. They're not getting enough protein. That's what you need, protein. People don't eat enough of it. How do we get that message across? They need about a gram per pound of body weight of protein. So before you do all this crazy stuff, for goodness sakes, guys, get enough protein in your diet or you're just gonna be spinning your wheels, making no gains. That other stuff might work, but if you don't have enough protein, it means nothing. It's hard to eat that much protein. You might not have time, you're not a busy job. What you need is something easy, something you can just throw in a shaker bottle, put a little water in it, shake it up, and there you go. You have protein, 20 grams a scoop, ambrosia planta. It makes it so easy to get your protein. So before you go doing all this crazy stuff, wasting time and energy, make sure you get enough protein in your diet for the past few months I've been making the gains of my life never thought I'd be training this way but I've taken all of the new data on hypertrophy and put it together not only am I making all these gains I'm never terribly sore I never feel run down my energies through the roof I'm able to hike I'm able to swim I'm able to do Everything I love, it doesn't cut into my life. I don't feel fatigued, I don't feel terrible, but I'm still making these crazy gains. It is the Superior Hypertrophy Training Book, and it is yours, and it is free. Go to superiorhypertrophy.com, that's superiorhypertrophy.com, and start it today. You have nothing to lose. It's absolutely free, my gift to you. Now go make some damn gains.